I want to bring a national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, from the White House Study of the North Lawn, sir. Thank you for your time and thank you for being patient. We're juggling a lot of things today. Good afternoon to you. Oh, it's a busy day here at the White yeah. House as well. Good I to be with so, you, Bill. So, uh, like every day, let's motor through a couple things here. How serious is this matter uh, with the Bidens, do you believe? Well, it's really something for the FBI and Justice Department to look into. Uh, what I'm concerned about is, is that uh, the allegations that are made are consistent with what we've seen China doing for many, many years with the United States, and that's seeking to uh, use, use mo money, uh, funds, investment deals, trade deals, uh, sometimes blackmail to uh, gain influence over uh, Ill Americans that, that they think can help them. So uh, what's being reported is, is consistent with how China's operated in this country for many years, and we need to put a stop to it. Uh, but I, I don't have a lot of specific information with respect to the, the Bidens. Can, can you say if Bobulinski is credible? Yeah, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know Bobulinski. I mean, he seems to have uh, uh, documents and, and electronic devices that he's given to the FBI, so we'll find out shortly. But, the, okay. you know, the allegations are concerning, of yeah. course. Let's talk about election security. You said the other day that the White House has spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to make sure it's safe and secure. Uh, then we get the story about Russia and Iran the other day messing with our emails and sending tweets or whatever they were doing. Uh, why do we think we're so fragile that we would bend, our democracy could be bent? by Tehran or Moscow by some emails in Florida or Alaska, as it was described? Well, I, I don't think we are, and that's the point I've been making for some time, is there's a difference between these attempts to what I call election influence, so emails or uh, Twitter accounts or fake Facebook accounts that you know may talk about some Russian talking about the Second Amendment from St. Petersburg or the, the uh, Iranians pretending to be the Proud Boys or some organization that they think will hurt President Trump. Uh, I, I don't think that has a lot of impact. We're, we're careful about it. We're monitoring it. We're shutting it down where we see it. We're alerting the American people. We're making sure that sunshine's the best disinfectant. But I think our election infrastructure, the, the machines that we vote on, the paper ballots that we use, the, the Secretary of State's office across the 50 states are very robust. And, and what I encourage people to do and what the President's encouraged people to do is get out and vote. That's the best way to deal with these foreign adversaries that want to have some influence over us. So I, I make a difference between influence operations, many of which are, are poor and, and, and not well thought out and, and I don't think move okay. the needle, and, and attacks on our election infrastructure. And I think we've done a great job hardening our election infrastructure so that on election day we know the proper tally of votes will come in. Well, Middle East, I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime, to be honest with you. And it's not a done deal and perhaps far from it. Sudan says they'll make peace with Israel. Why is this dam breaking? Well, it's because the president's policies is why the dam is breaking. Number one, he took strong action against Iran, which was causing mischief and, and was engaged in malign activity all over the region with Hamas and Hezbollah and Assad and the Houthis in, in Yemen. Uh, the president stood up to him and, and he cut off the $150 billion of sanctions relief they were getting from JCPOA. And our Arab neighbors saw that and our Arab friends and Gulf allies and they realized that we were going to stand up for him. And in Israel, he did something no presidents had promised to do but had never done. He moved. Our, he actually moved our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. He recognized the Golan Heights as being part of Israel. And then he took that political capital that he developed in the Gulf and, he, and they developed in Israel and prodded both sides to come to the table. And, and he's achieved just a historic breakthrough with three peace deals in, in less than two months. And, and look, we're not even talking about Kosovo, which is a Muslim-majority country in Europe yeah, that recognizes Israel. Israel. Yeah. Uh, who's so it, it's just, just, just to, terrific. Just to move it along here, who's next? Well, I think there are a number of countries that, that want to go next. Uh, we're talking to, uh, you know, you just look at the map, we're talking to countries in North Africa, we're talking to countries in the Middle East. I don't want to prejudge uh, who's going to well, make well, the it president uh, past said, the line. The president said Iran today. Is that for real or is that pie in the sky? No, I, I think what he said with Iran is, and I, I was there with him in the Oval, is that once everybody else has made peace with Israel and, and, and is, is trading with the United States and we've got a, a, just a wonderful situation in the Middle East, Iran's going to be feeling pretty left out. And he wouldn't be surprised if the Iranian people just demanded that their government uh, get on board because there's going to be tremendous peace and prosperity as a result of these deals. It's going to be good for people in the region, but it's going to be great for Americans as well as we trade and, and have great it's, relations it's, it's with very, these countries. It's very interesting. As I said, it's, it's not done till it's done, right, Till the deal is signed. Can you get that before Election Day? 
Well, it, well, with, with Sudan, we, Sudan, we have, and we have with UAE, and we have with uh, with, with Bahrain, and you know, I, I, we're not on an election day schedule. Each one of these negotiations has their own pace, and and they're they're tough negotiations. I mean, people have been at this for for 70 years since Israel was created, but we're going to get a few more, and uh, and they'll come when they come. But I think it'll be pretty soon. Appreciate your time, and again, thanks for being patient, Robert O'Brien from the North Lawn. Thank you, sir. Great, hope, great to be with you, Bill. Thank hope you. Hope you come back. Thank you for your time. Uh, always. Thanks.